Okay. Uh, so over the past few years, I've been working on um, the huge games problem, right? This is a problem everyone knows and is familiar with, um, but all major companies seem to completely ignore, um, which is the hour-long 100 gigabyte game download. You also need to reserve space for it. It's horrible. Um, the solution that these giant companies are coming up with is, you know, cloud gaming, right? Um, and, and, you know, cloud gaming, you, you send your inputs over up to a server and then they stream the video back to you. Um, so the game doesn't run locally. You get uh, poor image quality due to the video compression. Uh, input latency is added. Um, it's expensive. They have to host uh, high powered machines. Um, so, uh, you know, this is, this is not that this is an alternative solution. Um, that is, uh, you know, it, it's a virtual file system. Um, and I'll, I'll briefly explain a little bit about, about what that actually means. Um, but uh, to start, I'm just gonna show um, the download and setup process. I'm gonna show a demo on Halo Infinite. And um, uh, yeah, just, just to give like a, a progress update on where I am. Um, okay, so I'm on venuesoft.net here. Um, and um, yeah, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna download and go through the setup. And you know, the setup's simple. Um, it's not supposed to be complicated, right? Um, and so, okay, here it is. We're set up. Um, we need to do a couple of things. The first thing we need to do is sign into Steam here, and we need to set up some storage, okay? So I'll sign into Steam. Um, and this is going to do the Steam Guard stuff. Um, okay, and so you can see what's happening is Via is kind of collecting the full Steam library for this account, um, and then what it immediately did there is it it launched Steam, right? Um, and so something you'll notice, right, is, is the setup was pretty trivial, right? Uh, we have to do one more thing, which is allocate some space for Via. Um, I'm going to do that on this Optane drive here, um, and I just used the whole Optane drive for the Via cache. Um, this is where Via will put put game data as it downloads it over time. Um, uh, and you know, the size of this can vary. You can do it on multiple drives up to you. Um, but yeah, so right now it's good to go. Uh, I'm going to do one more thing, which is set a download limit here. Um, so that we're not downloading it at, at a super high speed. I'm trying to be more, uh, representative of, of a more average connection. Um, okay. So something you'll notice is steam opened here, right? Um, and, um, uh, so, so we have all of these games listed, right? Now, the thing is, none of these games are actually installed, right? If I, if I right-click on the game and hit Properties, um, we can hit, see Installed Files here. It says um, Size of Install, and then it's on this VIA drive, okay? Uh, and what does that mean? Well, so the VIA drive, if you, if you look in Windows Explorer, is right here. And, and this is the virtual file system drive. Um, and, and this is, just to briefly show it, uh, this is a, a virtual folder structure that is, is mocking out the... Uh, library for the user that you're signed in as, right? Um, so if I come in here, you'll be able to see the full list of all games that this account has. Um, and they're all listed here. Uh, and we also do workshop mods. We have workshop mod support, right? So those are all listed here as well. Um, but yeah, so so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to launch Halo Infinite um, and we're going to let VIA work. Um, so again, something to realize, this is not... Um, this is not like a normal cloud gaming service. Uh, we're playing the game completely locally. Um, it's just that the actual game content that you download through Steam normally is not downloaded. Okay, it's it's a virtual file system. It's a virtual Steam library. Um, so when I hit play here, we're gonna see uh, Via start doing some work. Um, okay, so here we go. Uh, and you can see this this warning up here is just about the server having to fetch a more some updated updated data. Um, but that'll be quick and then we'll be back to uh, you know native speed. Uh, and you can see the game's already open, right? Um, and so something we're looking at here, this is just the performance screen, right? Um, this is showing how V is performing right now. Um, and you can see we're actually getting some loss on the network, but um, maybe someone else is downloading right now. But yeah, so you can see the game's open and we, we didn't actually download the game, right? Um, it, it's kind of being on-demand loaded. 
Um, yeah, and so if you just want to, to understand some of these stats here, right? So CPU here, this is the amount of time being spent in, in the via uh, kernel mode driver. Um, this is the memory used by the driver, open file handles, some stats about, uh, about the access patterns, right? This is the requests per second made by the game. Uh, input output data going in and out from the game, right? Uh, down here you can see server receive. This is like our actual download rate right now, um, is this server receive number. Um, and then this is the server ping. The, and, and the ping here is just the min ping that we've, we've seen over the last 10 seconds, or 30 seconds rather. Um, but yeah, so so we're we're just loading the game right now, um, and yeah, so so you can see this is this is also not necessarily a load bound load screen. Like they're probably doing like shader compilation type stuff, um, which does just take CPU time. So that's not really dependent. Like you can see, there's big gaps here where not a whole lot was going on. Um, so the game was not actually bottlenecked by Via. Um, but okay, so yeah, the game's playable. Um, and I'm just going to basically hop in. Um, uh, and yeah, th this via window, you can you can have it run in background. You don't have to like have it up and look at it or anything. Um, but it's good for demonstrating what exactly is going on. Um, so yeah, so right now we're just, uh, th there's a, a model that's going to load in here in a second, right? And that's what this, this uh, period here was, right? Um, among other things, probably. But one of the things being done here is we were just downloading that guy that just showed up on the screen, right? Uh, and that's fundamentally what Via, what what Via uh, brings to the table, right? Is we didn't have to download that guy and everything in the entire game up front. We only downloaded it right when we needed it. The game requested the, the guy, and so we got the guy. And the guy doesn't come down if the game doesn't need the guy, right? Um. Uh, so yeah, so I'll just um I'll hop into a game here. I'm looking for big team battle. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, over time, all of this data that's being kind of like accumulated, we're like piecemeal uh, gathering the game data as it's requested, and then it's getting committed back to this uh, this storage drive here. Um, and it's being cached there. So that if we want to play the game again later, which we'll demonstrate after, uh, it'll come off this drive instead, right? Um, but yeah, so we're just searching for a match, and you can see there's these little spikes of, of download here, and that's demonstrating, again, we don't get data if we don't need it, right? This is probably audio streaming, right? There's like a little uh, a sound playback going on in the background, and every five seconds the game requests some data for that sound playback to continue. And when it does that, we download it. So if you didn't, if that, if that audio didn't need to play back, you didn't download it, right? Um, that's kind of that's that's what via is really providing um so yeah so we're loading the map right now um uh yeah and, and just to again clarify the the pink line here is the the download the green is to game and the, the the blue here is the commit back to disk and you know hilariously we're waiting for other players to load um Uh, yeah, but I mean, as you can see, there's there's basically no the setup was trivial, right? You just sign into your account, pick where you want to store some, pick where you want via to, to store data, and then that's it, right? Um, there's really nothing more to it. Um, uh, and you know, this test I'm doing, you know, 10, 10 milliseconds latency and two hundred megabits per second. Those are the kind of parameters of the connection. Uh, the performance of a game can vary. It, it, it depends a lot on how well the game um, makes requests. Like you can see here, this is actually, the game's pretty good about making requests, Halo Infinite is, because they can keep the pipe full and we can get the full rate. Uh, so that means you could play Halo Infinite on high ping and it wouldn't be a problem. There's no fundamental reason why ping is a problem, unlike cloud gaming services where ping is directly related to input latency and it's a fundamental issue. Um, but here, it, that's not actually a problem. You could be on 100 ping and this, this same download rate would happen. Um, but certain games, that's not true. Like, if, if the game does like a read-wait, read-wait pattern, then it, it's bottlenecked by the latency. Um, and that could become problematic, but...
Uh, yeah. So here we are, we're in game. Um, and you can see all this stuff is just being loaded as we need it, right? Um, like the high resolution version of that model we see on the screen there was not actually downloaded until probably five seconds ago, right? Um, and you can see the game's just completely playable, right? Um, we didn't have to wait extra time. There's no, there's no lag. We don't have poor image quality due to streaming off of a cloud provider or whatever, right? Um, it's just completely native. There's no uh, issue that you, you wouldn't even know you're on via, right? Um, yeah, and so something we're taking advantage of, right, is if you look here, you can see the download rates varying as we move through the, the level. And so something we're leveraging with the virtual file system method that we're that we implemented here is, um, you know, games already have built in streaming uh, capabilities for loading off of solid state drives, right? Just already like there's already level of detail and loading in higher resolution things as you traverse the world. Um, and so we're just kind of taking advantage of that. You can see we haven't moved, so there's been no new data to load, right? Um, Um, but, you know, as you move throughout the world, right, um, if we come over here, you'll see we're, we're going to start downloading stuff as we move. Um, let me see if I can, like, get over here. Maybe some new stuff will load in. Uh, but yeah, you can see, like, as we move around, you know, there's probably, like, for example, that guy's uh, armor plates or whatever uh, were, like, a special fire effect. I bet that probably doesn't get loaded until there's somebody near you with that effect on, right? Uh, and that's kind of just, that's the, the streaming uh, system. We're just taking advantage of that, right? Um, uh, but yeah, so I'll, I'll quit out of this. Um, and then we'll show show the kind of cached performance, right? Why not click it? Okay. Um, yeah, and so you, so we're loading back to the main menu, and a lot of this has already been cached in memory, and that's why the green bars are so high here, um, is we're kind of immediately just serving the content up from memory as opposed to getting it from the network or from the disk cache. But, um, okay, so if we quit out of this, um, and then if we wanted to kind of simulate, like, you know, we left for the day and came back tomorrow and we wanted to play again, right? If that was the situation, you know, here we are, we're back the next day. Um, I restarted via there, but that does is it completely unloads the file system driver and, and, and kind of, uh, we start from a clean slate, except for that, that on disk cache that's on our O drive. Right. Um, and so now if we, if we run back into halo infinite, right. Um, you can see it, it loaded some stuff off disk. It's loading some more stuff off disk here. Uh, and we're in. This is at or better than just native performance. Um, so here you can see, for example, we got a 1.2, 1.3-ish gigabyte per second a read spike there. And so all of this data is coming rapidly off of the, the disk cache, right? So if you play a game frequently for a few days, right, uh, you only have to actually download the content once. And then over time, as you play different games or you play through different content in the same game, the content you haven't played in a while will, will just naturally kind of get cycled out of the cache. Um, and so now you, you don't have to, the, the actual concept of the size of a game is actually not even relevant anymore, right? Uh, you can play a, a 150 gigabyte game on 20 gigabytes of cache space. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll hop into another match here and then we'll We'll compare the performance. Um, so yeah, I mean, big team battle. Um, and so here, for example, some of the content that's specific is that specific map, right? If we never played that map, we, it would never be in our cache. And so if we play a different map this time, we're gonna have to download that map. But if we play the same map, we'll, we'll pull it out of cache. Um, yeah, so the the um, the latency thing, like I was mentioning, um, it depends game to game, right? One of the things we're trying to do at scale is is have locations um, 
throughout the world that makes it so that you're you're likely to have low ping, you know, in the 10 to 20 range or whatever. Um, right now, we're kind of uh, in, in a small stage, so we only have a server in Chicago right now. Um, and then we're also in the process of getting one in Germany for, for Europe. Um, but, you know, again, that, that varies game to game. It's not actually a requirement to have low latency. Um, we have people playing on higher than 100 milliseconds right now from Europe. Um, and it works on, on games that behave well. Which is most uh, modern AAA games are are pretty good about that. Um, there's periods where, where it can be bad during during the load. It's not like 100% of the time it's good. Um, Halo Infinite's a pretty good example of it being good. Um, but... Yeah, it varies game to game. Um, so we're loading a lot of stuff off disk here, but we also loaded some stuff off the network. Uh, same same map, I guess. Uh, so yeah, so most of this this map came off of the disk. Um, and then there's some new data we're fetching that has to do with, I guess, I don't know, like where um, the camera's panning or something. Or maybe it's loading some model that I didn't have last time, right? Like maybe one of these models here was not on the last screen. And so they didn't have to load the higher resolution version of it. I don't know. Um, yeah, you can see like last time there was this big period of, of, of downloading for like, you know, 30 seconds or whatever. But that's that's not the case this time because most of this map has already been downloaded. I um, mean, we're just we're, we're in it, right? Um, yeah. So I think I'm going to call that here. Um, this is the this has been the the via tech demo this is where i'm at it's been a couple of years of development um and we're kind of entering this early access phase um where we're trying to get people on it trying to scale it up a little bit um it's free right now um you know hopefully in the future valve will start paying us to distribute content for them so it'll always remain free but we'll see um yeah um so uh, hopefully the easy setup was was made clear there. Like it's not a uh, the the whole goal of Via is to be as frictionless as possible. You shouldn't even know it's a thing, right? Um. Uh, but yeah, just go. You can go to the site here, venuesoft.net. Um, we'll probably update these these demos, add like a setup guide and stuff like that. But yeah, you just download it, sign in, and, and you're good to go.